Welcome to Lecture 6 of Fluff Body Aerodynamics. In this lecture, we're going to briefly discuss uh, aeroacoustics uh, as it pertains to automo automobiles. We'll cover basic aero concepts of acoustics um, as an introduction. Uh, we'll cover the idea of aerodynamic sound sources and then go over some main automotive sound sources and, and how to reduce them. The key messages to take away from this lecture are that you know, sound is the human perception of unsteady pressure fluctuations. And aerodynamic sound can be a problem, at high, especially at high vehicle speeds, um, as it can reduce occupant comfort. Generally, reducing flow separations, and in particular the, the 2D types of separations that were discussed earlier in the course in lecture four, uh, will help to reduce these unwanted sounds. Acoustics is the study of sound. Um, again, this is this human perception of, of pressure fluctuations in air, and we'll provide a sort of a high level introduction to acoustics before getting into the automotive applications. Sound moves at a finite speed. So these pressure fluctuations that we perceive as sound, which are waves, um, move through air at the speed of sound, which for a perfect gas is uh, the square root of uh, gamma, the specific heat ratio, R, the specific gas constant, and the temperature. Um, and at standard atmospheric conditions, that speed of sound is about 340 meters a second. So a sound wave moves uh, about a kilometer in three seconds. And it's really important to note that sound waves move at the speed of sound relative to the fluid. So if you have a fluid that's moving at half of the speed of sound, then in the direction the fluid is moving, sort of if I'm a stationary observer, the speed of sound is sort of one and a half times the speed of sound, and if there's a wave moving the other direction, it's moving at half the speed of sound. Luckily for vehicles, we're typically uh, considering movement of the vehicle in air that's essentially still, and so this is something we don't really need to think about with automotive aerodynamics. The pressure fluctuations are often represented by their root mean squared value, or RMS value. Where at a point in space, um, if we've got pressure that's fluctuating in time over some time period t, um, we can get the associated sound pressure with that, which is just the square root of the integral, uh, sorry, the square root of the, uh, the average, um, basically, of uh, p minus p bar squared, where p bar is the time average pressure, as we see here, based on the mathematical definitions. So we call this a root mean square pressure fluctuation. Uh, so it's the square root of the mean of the squares of the fluctuating portion of the pressure. Now, human sound perception um, is not linear. In, instead, it's logarithmic. So if we double the magnitude of the RMS sound pressure, that does not correspond to a doubling of the of person's perceived loudness of that sound. Um, instead, we have this more or less logarithmic response. So we define the sound pressure level um, as a non-dimensional unit, which allows us to get a, a measure that tracks sort of the human perception a little bit more accurately. And so this is defined as 20 times the log to the base 10 of the pressure fluctuation uh, RMS value over a reference pressure where the reference pressure is 2 times 10 to the minus 5 pascals. The reason for that reference pressure is that this uh, being what it is, is that this is typically the smallest sound pressure that uh, can be heard by an average human with good hearing. So it's helpful to visualize this logarithmic relationship in order to sort of see what this really means. So we see that um, because of the log type relationship uh, at very small values of, of P prime, we get a very rapid rise in sound pressure level, and then it rapidly levels off, and that's of course the nature of a logarithmic function. But note that these are very large values of P prime down here, and that you know P prime on the order of a few pascals is more common. So you know sound pressure levels of sort of 80 to 130 decibels are kind of uh, you know loud noises in our everyday experience. We often think of sound in the frequency domain instead of in the time domain. So you often see um, SPL not necessarily quoted as an overall value, but as a function of frequency or as a value sort of integrated over a particular range of frequencies. The human hearing covers the frequency range from about 20 to uh, 20,000 hertz. Um, a, a 
hertz is a, a one cycle of the signal per second. Um, and so this, this is important in terms of thinking about things in the frequency domain for two reasons. One is that, so of course, any periodic signal can be represented in terms of its constituent frequencies. So this is the idea of Fourier analysis, which hopefully you'll have seen at some point before. Um, and human hearing sensitivity is also a strong function of frequency. We're most sensitive in the range in which human speech occurs, which is sort of around you know, a few hundred up to about 4,000 hertz. 